what you see here is our large scale vortex cannon. We use this, it shoots nice smoke rings. I've blown out a candle at 65 okay, now big one. feet with this cannon. I use it in many demos, but rather than making one of these giant ones, we're going to have right, you yeah. make uh, vortex cannons out of five gallon okay. pails, awesome. and they turned out pretty neat. So in order to make the uh, vortex cannon, uh, we're going to begin by prepping a five gallon pail for uh, its use, and that will involve cutting a hole in the center of the pail, and then cutting two, or four I should say, other smaller holes, uh, and you'll see how that will work out. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to just start right now, start right in uh, with uh, the instructions on how to make it. Okay, now big. Uh, do the first part, which is what we're going to do is cut a small circle about maybe two to three inches in diameter from the bottom of this bucket. And that's going to be the place where the air is going to come shooting out. And I <laughs> couldn't find a, a good compass, so I made my own. Just so you can see, uh, wasn't that hard to do. I used the ruler and a screw, and I'm just going to put the screw in there, and, and I use a little uh, Sharpie pen just to cut a nice circle around. Okay. And that will give me the outline of how I want to do this, so that's what it looks like when it's all said and done here. I used red, which doesn't show up real well, but it's all I could find in my house. So then, the next part is to cut out the hole. So, I'll do that next. So, to cut out the hole, I'm going to have this available for us at our workshop. It's just a little a little punch roto zip drill and we should be able to just put it in here and work our way around now having a steady hand is useful I don't always have that steady of a hand so we're kinda of stuck with with that reality so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try well I didn't do the best job in the world, but it will certainly do the job. And so what I have here now is I cut out the hole. And so that's where the air is going to come out. The trick here is we don't want it too big. We actually want it to focus the gust of air so that the ball of air comes flying out like this. So that's what it looks like when it's doing if you do it well. And so that will be the tricky part maybe for some of you. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is I need to drill a few holes in the edges here so that I have a place to hook the elastic that we're going to use in order to uh, allow the, um, uh, the, uh, the tarp, once we cut it, we're going to put tarp on this side and close it down and so we'll be able to pull back on the tarp and let go, the elastic will push down here and shoot the air out this way. So we have to have a place to affix this. And for the elastic that I'm going to also use, I have essentially just the same kind of shock cord that they make bungee cord from. And that's what we'll be using. Okay, so we'll be stringing that through. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to try to make two holes here and two holes here, so two holes here, two holes here, and I want them to be kind of spaced somewhere in the middle now, you don't have to be perfect at that, but what I'm going to do is actually use a, a straight edge and my, I'm going to use the pen that was on my homemade compass, and I'm going to go ahead and just estimate sort of the midpoint of this, I don't think it has to be, like I say, that perfect, it'll still work just to get things going and I'm just for for me I'm just going to draw a little line along here to just sort of guide my path whoops and drop this straight edge while I'm at it. okay so I just drew a little straight line no big deal 
I don't know how well you can see it. Yeah, it, like I said, I didn't pick the right color, but you can kind of see it right here and right there. And I'm just going to punch a hole in on either side of this line. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to start off. I got a little hole punch here. And uh, I'll grab one of my hammers and I'll just kind of, just a place so that I have a place for my drill. get the driver. something's working. So I have essentially, now I have drilled two holes and they're kind of on opposite sides of each other and that's where I'm going to tether the uh, bungee cord that I'm going to use to tie um, the tarp down. Okay. Okay, so the next part that we need to take care of is we need to fit this this uh, this thing this <laughs> bucket that's going to be your vortex can. I'm just pulling out some of the stuff. We need to begin the process of getting it ready. So what I have here is a tarp. Now, if you ever decide to do this on your own, I've learned that if you use my wife taught me this. If you use these kind of pinking shears that that cut on an angle, they can prevent your not an angle in a zigzag like this you can prevent the the tarping from unwinding I noticed that in fact just to verify that when I was at Home Depot that's how they had the samples cut so that they wouldn't unwind because you can look these are just finely weaved together so I cut a size and I and for the workshop you'll have these pre-cut okay and I, I cut them out so that I can fit this now I want to fit this over the, the container so that I can begin the process of, of lining up and putting where I can put the holes where I can put in my, um, I'm going to put in, this is where I'm going to connect the bungee cord and also where I'm going to connect a, uh, a rope that we can use as a handle to pull it back. So to, to get this fit I like to kind of play around with it a little bit. And I don't want to leave a lot of folded edges because I, I don't know if that makes a difference, but it just doesn't look that good to me. And I, I got to think that that might impact the performance. So I just keep kind of pushing this down and around and trying to keep it stretched out as possible. And I'm trying to build in a little, I need to make sure that I don't push it too hard because I have to come up. I have a, an elastic, you'll see later, a Velcro elastic that we're going to wrap around here to hold this on very tightly. And uh, I'm not ready for that part yet, but I'm just kind of getting this kind of set up so I can mark where I want to put the holes. And so I'm kind of working on this a little bit. It takes a little bit of piddling around, but I think that in the end, I think if you get something that more or less looks like that, so you got a little bit of a depression, and that's that sort of represents then the amount of air that you're going to push through this thing. I'm then going to uh, use my handy dandy compass marker again just because that's the state of I, I'm in. I'm going to have to actually remove it from my compass. I don't need it anymore anyway. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of put in sort of a mark where I want to put, put the bungee cord through to tighten it. I don't like where I just put it, so I'm going to put an X through that. I want it to be a little bit closer together. Something like that I think should be about right. 
so let's see if I can get the lighting just right. You can kind of see where I darkened in the two right there and right there. This one I X'd out because I think I wanted the two to closer. So now I'm going to take this out and cut those holes. Anyway, I'm going to use these to cut out the holes. Now, I mentioned before I used the pinking, pinking shears, I'm not even sure if that's what they're actually called, to cut, to cut this because it has a tendency to unravel. Um, I'm going to do a different sort of thing at this point. I'm going to cut these out and uh, then I'm going to uh, use some duct tape. In this part you'll be doing actually. So I'm going to just cut it out like this and then I'll reinforce it with some duct tape. Boy, these are nice scissors. Okay. Got it. So here we go. Got the nice duct tape. You can see through here. Uh, got the got these two little editing. So I got this here, and what I'm going to first do is just reinforce some of this here. With this, ooh, this is pretty good. This isn't duct tape; it's a gorilla glue tape or gorilla tape. Not a very sharp one, though. There we go. If all of a sudden you see a bunch of blood gushing, that's because I cut my finger. Okay, so I got a piece of tape here that I'm going to just reinforce this whole thing with that because I I think it's important and it's pretty strong. It glued to the other end and. Uh, you know, you're saying, well, you just cut the holes. Oh, I'm going to just go ahead and just cut those out again. I just find that having the, uh, the, the reinforcement with the duct tape is very useful, and it should allow you to do quite a few shots of this cannon. Uh, it's pretty impressive, actually, when they work right. So here, so there we go. We got our nice reinforced. Here's my fingers again. Hey, see, got my nice reinforced uh, holes. So now we're ready to start uh, the process of tying and assembling our cannon. Okay, now uh, as I mentioned before, now it's time to put all these things together and begin the process of assembling our, our uh, cannon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the cannon down just for a minute and I just, uh, I'm going to kind of take these, I have this shock cord, this bungee cord material, and push it through the holes. So it looks something like this. So I got it nice and snug in the holes here, right? Just want you to see that. Uh, I had two smaller pieces so I tied them together. You'll probably have a single piece so this part uh, won't, this knot won't get in the way but it'll get in the way today for me. And so then I'll, I'll pull this just kind of so I, so this whole thing stays out of my way because now I have to thread it into the cannon. So the way I can do that, so I just kind of do this to begin with. And, and now I want to thread these guys through these holes. So you can kind of see, see you can see I'm poking it through the hole and poking it and then pulling it through this other hole. And I'm going to, of course, I could tie a knot, for instance, if I wanted to, but I think that that gets to be a pain. So I'm going to actually use that heavy duty uh, tape. And so now you want to sort of adjust this. So I'm going to pull on these, kind of to get them to get things so that this is, you know, maybe pulled. Remember, we want it to sit inside the bucket a little bit. So I'm trying to give you a sense of that. This is tied down into the bucket, maybe, I don't know, six or seven inches, something like that. Do a peek now at what I've done inside of here. You can see how I've taped this pretty good here. 
and so in so doing that's going to be very secure and uh, and handle things really nicely speaking of handling you can kind of see now how this is going to sit see I now want to actually build a handle and so I have something to pull because I find if we pull this we might actually wreck our uh, wreck our uh, build a little handle and I like to use a piece of rope for that and the, there's kind of a trick to this I find that uh, you're going to use this handle to pull this back so if you think about it you don't want to just simply put this through the, the tarping itself I actually do it so that I I go into the tarping and then I come through the other side of the the bungee cord so that I'm actually wrapped around the bungee cord like this so I can pull the against the bungee cord directly otherwise the bungee cords uh, strength is going to be so great that you'll have to almost rip this stuff here in order to uh, make this work and in fact once I once I do this part I am going to use some more duct tape and I'm going to tape I'm going to tape this area up to sort of get rid of these holes and stuff like that that, that are still remaining. But guess how I'm going to uh, attach these? I'm going to tape them because I like tape. Uh, I have so far and I'm going to kind of stretch this out and, and uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to use some more tape and I'm going to tape up the holes so that you know that will improve the gush of air that we're going to get from this so I'm just going to go ahead and tape over this actually reach through here Oops, that's just what I didn't want to do I'm going to actually cut this too so this is my quick and dirty version of this when I have a little more time I kind of putz with it a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead now and get this nice and set up for the last step which is to get this thing to stick nice and tightly around here. You could use tape but taping up so it's just this velcro stuff and it's for taping uh, like tomatoes or something like that. It's gonna I wonder if there's a better way to do this. Let's try this again. I'm going to have to go get some help from my family. Alright, let's see if I can get this all the way around. Oh, oh, so close. So, so, so close. And through the magic of Velcro. There we go. I think I got to tighten it just a, bit, a little better. Out. You got to kind of stretch it and really make it tight. There we go. So here we have it. And if it works right, it should. Okay, so here's the test. I have the vortex cannon here and about 16 feet away based on a I measured it with our tape measure is a candle and I'm going to try to aim that and see if I can blow out the candle at 16 feet so let's see how it looks okay here we go let's see if I got the aim right let's give it a try there we go. I'm gonna. Do you film I am. Yep. So we use a fog machine, and we add some smoke. See if we can get that. Maybe give it a little bit more. That's good. Try not to set off any fire alarms. And let's see how this works. Aim it right at the camera. Helps if you do a short one first. That was pretty wimpy. 
Oh yeah. Try again. <laughs> Can't do a big one. Woo! <laughs> do it again. Try to hit the camera. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> All right. I think that's good.